Okay, so what we want to look at is how to construct spiraled plate in the case of a stair, for example. So like we have something similar to here, right? So the idea is we want to create this plate that goes up and around to support the treads, become the stringer, if you like, for those stairs as you go up and down the around a tank or something similar, right? So the idea is that we need to create the radius for inside the stringer and the radius for outside of the stringer. And we need to do some calculations to figure out from a low point to a high point uh, where we want to get to and then divide that equally amongst, in this case, I've used four different constructions to get to that same point. Um, keeping in mind that it's got to be the same gradual increase all the way along. Um, I then create a spline. So I would come in here and pick this endpoint, pick this endpoint, pick that endpoint, pick that endpoint, and hit enter. All right, which creates for me that uh, effect that I'm creating, right? I then want to copy the line or the spline down by a distance to give me the depth of um, the, the, the flat bar or the, the plate that I want to use. So, I, you know, type in whatever value you want for that depth. So let's just say, for example, I'm going to go 250 deep. And this is not the depth. I'm just copying the line down 250. Obviously, you need to figure out the mathematics for the, the triangle here for the vertical distance. But I'm just going to go for a nominal 250 deep to give the example of what we're going to do. Now, to actually create this plate, what we need to do is we need to come into the objects ribbon. And in here, there is a plate function called create twisted folded plate. Now, this allows me to select arcs, lines, splines, polylines to create the plate that we want. Um, now, the, the, the normal example that I would show is a planar twisted plate. But in this case, if I pick, uh, you know, the first edge and the second edge, specify the number of division points. So, again, choosing something to split up the number of segments is going to give you a greater accuracy. Obviously, if I split it into four, you're going to get a very choppy and lumpy scenario. Um, if I split it into... 360, I'm going to get an extremely accurate scenario or very uh, smaller split division of plates. However, you're going to end up with a model that is slightly slower. So finding something that suits you, whether it's inside, outside, you know, again, you just got to choose the depending on which side you're doing, you figure out which one it is that you want, pick OK, and then it goes and creates the plate for you. All right? And you would, of course, repeat that on the other side to give us that scenario. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to create the next part of our stringer because obviously every stringer has there's a landing in between before it goes off again. You don't want to do that all in one complete go. So we need to figure out where that uh, that that point is, right? So let's just say hypothetically, you know. This is our um, section that we want to use as the flat before it goes on the same flat again, right? So, I mean, if we said, for example, you know, something here to here, you know, so there's a flat distance there, and then the string is going to go off again. So what we're going to do is if I'm going to use my AutoCAD skills here, first point, break from this intersection to that intersection, and I'm going to copy this line here up to the end of that. Now, again, I'm going to do the same thing as I did before. So we want to copy this down by whatever the value is. Let's say in this case, again, 250, so that the corners nicely, beautifully meet up, meet up right? Um, and in plan, we look the bend continues in that direction, right? Now, the idea is that, again, we use our twisted folder plate, we select on the same end, 
choose the the divisions. So you know, I might choose 16 divisions. Pick that. Pick OK. And now I've got two plates. Now the beautiful part about twisted folder plate or folder plate itself is there's always two options. There's a create folder plate with with a position adjustment, meaning I'm connecting two plates and then I'm going to rotate one of them. Or I model them in place and I use the, the create folder plate without a position adjustment. So just so you can see this a bit clearly, all I do is I come and choose that option there. I choose to connect these two together and it determines the angle and creates the fold between the two automatically. And now when you, if I go back to here, you can see I've got one giant bit of plate that makes up that complete bend from beginning to end. And again, you'd obviously repeat that on both sides. Now, if you need to modify the shape of the end, maybe to suit it standing on a piece of concrete or something like that, you can always choose to come in here, go back to 2D and delete the the radiuses or the, the the bends between these segments of plate right so I can left click right click delete the fold fold left click right click delete the fold do whatever it is that I need to do you know so let's say just argument sakes let's say I grab this bit of plate here and I put it in to be the same level as that All right so now I've, I've, I've flattened out that bottom edge if you like all I do is I use that option for the create uh, folder plate without the position adjustment again. Pick one, pick the second one, and repeat. Pick that one, pick that one, and I've rejoined them, and I've now got my bottom segments exactly how I want them. All right, so how do we get our tread object? To go up the spiral as we go along and you can use a number of different ways um, I, at the moment what I've done is I've just drawn a piece of plate to represent my uh, tread but it could be anything from a special part to a beam whatever you like all right the idea is you need to do some calculations obviously how many treads you're going to go up the division of that number of treads on an angle as well as the difference in height so I know that uh, I need 20 treads to go up this face let's say I know that I've got 3300 so that gives me 165 mil increment going up I also go I know I've got about a three degree or just just over a three degree rotation here so advanced still has a really cool tool called advanced copy um, so what I can do is I can select the object. I can choose to do a polar array. I can pick the center of the polar array. And then from the drop-down list, I can choose the, the, um, the different methods for copying and creating. So you've got total number of items and the angle between the items. You've got the total number of items and the angle of fill and you've got the angle of fill and the angle between each one. I'm gonna use the first one, and I'm gonna say I wanna have, I know I want, I've got 20 steps up, so let's go, we'll go one more, we'll go 21. I know my angle is 3.0 degrees, I've already calculated that based on my uh, 60.9281 degrees, and I know I need an increment of 165. Now one cool thing you can do here is, if you do, if you have this first element bolted to this item here, checking this box will make sure as each thing goes up, it will keep rebolting it as you go. Um, you've also got to make sure you check check the rotate item so that it rotates as you go along as well. Now, if I go and preview this, you can see here is my created item. I obviously don't need that last one on top. But you can see how quite quickly I can place all those components. If I'm happy, I can hit OK, or I can hit Modify and say I only want 20, pick OK, and then there I go. I've got my treads going all the way up.